lecture we are quasar which actually stands for quantifying uncertainty using artificial intelligence to simulate reality and and i'm i'm here with my uh, uh cso uh, indranil pan um he, he's in the audience so uh we're a go to uh, cloud integration service for powering digital twins i'll tell you more about digital twins but i think lots of people in the audience already know this is uh, the team. Um, so uh, you're on the call with, with me. I'm the CEO. Uh, Indranil is the CSO, and uh, Indranil is a research fellow, Imperial College research fellow here, uh, and is also a group leader at the Turing. Um, Lachlan is our CTO, and he's a group leader at the Turing uh, as well. Uh, Richard Crast is our COO, and, and he's, uh, he's here at Imperial as the Dean of Faculty of Natural Sciences. Um, our chairman and advisor in terms of commercial uh, commercialization uh, activities is Ashley. Ashley formed the company and sold it uh, for a sizable sum. Uh, is also a cloud technology pioneer. And we've got an advisory board, and, and you're looking at two of the members of the board. Uh, Dawn uh, is high up at Splunk, which is a well-known uh, data company, and Mark Girolami is the director of Digital Build Britain in Cambridge, and he directs the data center engineering program uh, at the Turing Institute. Uh, and so we're um, working in the area of digital twins. And, and of course, you, you may ask what they are. If you don't already know that, you know, it, it is becoming exceedingly important to have a digital replica uh, of, of assets. And, and these assets could be, um, you know, it could be a building, it could be a bridge, it could be, a, a, you know, an offshore platform, it could be a human um, and it is important to be able to 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 know the the current state of that asset, and, and that happens through the transmission of data in real time through some kind of an IoT type uh, arrangement. And then, what makes a digital twin a digital twin is the fact that you could take those data and then you could perform an intervention and control measure to to close the loop. And you can see here I've listed a, a number of uh, different industrial sectors where uh, digital twins are becoming increasingly important. And uh, there is 100% um, year-on-year growth. And in about five years from now, we're going to be hitting about $50 billion in terms of market size. So the time to invest is, is now and actually has been now for quite some time. Um, and so the question is, where does Quasar come in? So you can see the green boxes there, which effectively describe what I've said to you in terms of a, what a classical digital twin can do. And, and Quasar could do that. But um, judging by the discussion earlier, it, it is becoming exceedingly important to simulate different realities so that you know with some certainty whether or not your asset is performing anywhere near optimality uh, and whether there are perturbations um, in the world, which could be, for example, geopolitical in nature, affecting, for example, your supply chain, or if there are changes to legislation, or if you've been dis disrupted by, I don't know, more agile companies and, and so on, which push you away from your comfort zone and push your asset away from your comfort zone, it is very important to be able to scenario plan. And that can only be done through simulations. And that's really our, our core strength. And so in terms of what Quasar can offer. So in terms of these simulations, these are automated simulations which are launchable um, and they're connected also to the uncertainty uh, of, of, the, of the solution that, that's being provided. And, that's, and that reflects also my own core strength. So I, I, I've done a, a lot of simulations in the past in terms of uh, computational fluid dynamics and, and physics-driven approaches. And, and now we're combining this with data-driven uh, approaches. But the point about these simulations is that they are interpretable. And that's, of course, very important because you want to understand these trends in terms of you know, physical um, effects which you're comfortable with and that then gives you some comfort in terms of basing your decision, making your decision. Uh, Quasar can also interoperate with uh, legacy uh, software in, in companies and, and their own cloud infrastructure so that interoperability uh, is very important and that, that can be done, we can do that. Uh, we can also work with existing data warehouses to look for features, which really depend on the company that we're working with and, and, and the sector in which that company is. Um, th there could be uh, app uh, apps that could be built by us, or in fact, there's, you know, the, the service is simple enough where these apps could be built by users within a company where, for example, uh, a particular uh, task that's being performed you know, on a regular basis in that in that company could be packaged in terms of an app and actually helps with democratization where there are folks in, in companies that really want to contribute, but maybe they lack the, the, the detailed knowledge in terms of 
so, you know, software engineering and analytics and simulations, etc. So you, we put something in their hands which allows them to, to contribute very quickly. And, and then, and that also helps uh, in terms of um, tooling the uh, particular companies and, and making sure that they, they're accelerated on their road to uh, digitalization. And then finally, there are lots of data companies out there that lack uh, the um, ability to carry out simulations and they could perform these simulations with, with no uh, no code or, or low code um, type of approach through a, a, an API uh, of the Quiser service. Uh, we've had traction with companies. We've completed a, a paid pilot before um, uh, the pandemic uh, hit us, and uh, we're now in, in we're now in in the process of completing another one. That the, the the current one is with Procter and Gamble. Um, and the first one was in terms of environmental uh, contamination detection. This one with PNG is on decision automation, and there's going to be another one uh, with Arup after we're done with PNG, and that'll be really on on the optimization of the location of, of uh, offshore wind farms. It's really exciting as part of the energy transition solution. We're really excited about that. It's really a very very topical environment.